NASA recently celebrated their 50-year anniversary of the first American spacewalk. But let's set the stage. March 18, 1965, the Soviets were already kicking our butts in nearly every milestone. Alexei Leninov aboard the Voskhod 2 became the first person to perform a spacewalk. The space race had been well underway, and NASA and the Americans were coming up short to their Soviet rivals. Eight and a half G's are really being pushed into the seat, and all of a sudden, it stops. You're floating. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. The crew went through the preparation process. They reported we were ready. Yeah, my fault. I had a tracking station make sure that all of the safety criteria had been met, and this was now okay to open up the hatch. Okay, we're giving you a go for your EVA at this time. Okay. Roger, flight, let's go, okay? After we got the hatch open, uh, they had stood up in the seat and they got ready to go and and um, we cleared him to go and then he took and pushed off from the seat. Okay, my feet are out. I think I'm dragging a little bit so I don't want to fire the gun yet. Okay, I'm separating from the space ground. Ed White is flying at 17,000 miles per hour. 200 miles above the Earth. Okay, I'm out. If the spacesuit fails, the difference in pressure will kill him instantly. If the lifeline fails, he'll literally be lost in space. The only thing to do would be to disconnect them and let them float around out there. I mean, it was, you know, this, these are things that's in everybody's mind. We don't have a plan. We don't have a checklist on how you kill your best friend. As White floats in space, a glove drifts out of the capsule. Looks like a thermal glove, Jim. Yeah. I don't even know whose glove it was. I don't know whether it was his or mine. I feel like a million dollars. Today, those pictures are, are, are classic. They're still overpowering today to realize, number one, it's been done and that we did it. It blew me away. This is the greatest experience I've just remember. Here's where I think the animators got carried away with creative license. The astronauts' helmets don't swivel. They are fixed to an airtight ring base, which is sewn to nearly a quarter of an inch of multiply fabric, nylon, and mylar. Once pressurized, it becomes very stiff. Here we have the original footage of the actual EVA. It was taken on 16 millimeter film reel 440 feet long, which works out to be 12 minutes at 24 frames per second. The camera that can hold a 7-inch reel is fairly large, and we don't see anything that matches the description in the archives or pre-flight equipment manifest. The news outlets that reported on the equipment that went up with the astronauts pulled sources from earlier press releases and blended them with the latest flight info, because a lot of the technical details were still hush-hush, which is why the stories ran nearly three weeks after the event.
Even the home movie cameras of the day had three selections of 16, 18, and 24 frames per second. As we shall see later on, the handheld camera took footage of what appears to be 18 frames per second. But when filming the EVA, NASA chose to use a 7-inch reel of 440 feet of film. This would allow for 12 minutes of footage. The flight plan called for EVA to begin on the second orbit. Somewhere over Hawaii, the pilot was to open the hatch of a depressurized cabin and stand up. Over the west coast of the United States, he would leave the spacecraft and expose himself to space. For 12 minutes, he would perform maneuvers over the United States. He would return to Gemini 4 and continue the mission as the spacecraft neared the night side of the Earth over the Atlantic. This was the flight plan. During the final two days of the mission, Command Pilot McDivitt took a series of formal and informal motion picture shots with a 16mm camera mounted at the pilot's window. The camera turns inward. For a brief moment, we are able to ride tourist class with Gemini 4, watching the crew at work. We catch a glimpse of a space sunrise, flaring in brilliant color over the Earth's horizon. Using the same camera, McNivett photographed ground objects, including this small island in the Gulf of Mexico off the Texas coast. On another occasion, he photographed approaches to Yuma, Arizona. The detail seen here shows great promise for scientific exploration of the Earth, heretofore impossible. Using this technique, we could chart the major currents of the ocean, study weather patterns, and map the geology of the Earth. 